Morning, everybody. So, what I'd like <coughs> to discuss, obviously, from point of view, is uh, is the opportunities that change in the standards of to give to lift designers and manuf manufacturers to actually come up with changes to lifts that fundamentally we've been used to stay being the same way for, for now decades. So the lift directive obviously gives us the opportunity to do this. Um, obviously looking at these opportunities through there to come up with innovative safety systems. Uh, obviously the combination of mechanical and electronic systems give us ways of looking at uh, moving away from overspeed governors you know, in regards to the most primary function on a lift is the safety gear. So obviously from that point of view there, if you're removing components from the, sh the lift shaft, then you can then look to maximise the space in those shafts as well as going through there. And obviously it's very common, obviously in the UK, of putting new lift installations in existing buildings, in existing shafts. Obviously being able to maximise that potential space is very important de indeed. So going through... So the EN8121 obviously would guard this, obviously gives a more of a focus on these uh, pestrel programmable electronic sa systems in safety related applications for lifts. Nice mouthful there. So going through from there, the so from a manufacturer's point of view or a lift designer's point of view, the, old the, s the, si the standard now at EN8120.50 gives you the opportunity to look at making, doing some things and looking at some solutions that help you look at maximising safety it's obviously is the primary goal of any of, of any area to do is obviously protecting the maintenance personnel and obviously the, the users of the lifts so there obviously architects want to make sure that we can get the, the ma maximum lift in the in the, the space so obviously always looking at reducing headroom uh, reducing pit depth which obviously is more uh, obviously in the UK obviously we have a uh, certain considerations that we uh, want to be concerned about over and above the the EN standard uh, and going through these elements, the, the, the point of view about it is what we can't lose the fact is obviously we've got to maintain the safety spaces that the standard require as well, so through there. But again, combining all these, looking at existing components and changing them fundamentally going forward. PESTRAL obviously gives you the opportunity to obviously use it and the, system and the standard defines uh, safety integrity levels, that electronic or, or mechatronic, my new favourite word, regards things from there is allows you to be able to consider these systems going forward yeah certainly the the levels of that side of it from there which obviously means that it has to be an integrated solution it can't be just a you know, uh, one component with this it has to be integrated fully into the package so it has to be a cooperation between many specialist fields to ensure that you get the you get the the required safety as well as the uh, the, the, the lift to work in the environment you want to do it. So while obviously ENH 120 and obviously the use of these electronic systems and, and pestrel systems do obviously focus on a lot of areas, you know, uh, safety systems with the lift in the, in the door zones, in the car, the, you know, the side of it, safety balustrades on top of the lifts for the, for the users and various other devices to allow the maintenance personnel to, to obviously have full control of the lift and be safe about it. I just want to try and focus on one particular area, and obviously this is the use of uh, electromechanical solution for safety gears. So, some of the systems have not been, obviously from point of view there, to allow you to be able to do that, you've got to consider certain factors. Some of them obviously are not new ideas, the you know, elimination of mechanical limit switches, uh, you, know, so, you know, mechanical devices for obviously f uh, positioning of the lift. It's not a new solution side of it from there. But combined in these solutions with elimination of certain other products allows you to do it. So looking at side of things from there, obviously, you know, the one of the things that's going to help this obviously is an absolute positioning system in the lift shaft. And obviously the way forward on this side of this obviously is to go further with the magnetic strip based one. Uh, and then that allows you then to use the, 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 the electromechanical or the mechatronic safety gear. So I'm just going to look at this uh, side of thing from the absolute positioning system. It has a lot of advantages, obviously from point of view of travel height, uh, as well as obviously there's less moving parts. Um, you know, you can work, use it at high speeds. There's no strain on the system, you know, inside of it from there, side of it there. 
obviously in conjunction with uh, you know appropriate uh, technology and speed limiting devices therefore it you know you have got an apps you know the, the ways and means of actually understanding where this lift is in the shaft at any one time and obviously bearing in mind that you know the more and more emphasis on monitoring of lifts life cycles and information the lift to give you back maybe from a maintenance point of view and elements of obviously from enhanced safety of reaction times and speed times these devices obviously allow you to do that and obviously we are in the age of the smartphone and everybody one day wants to be able to see what the lift's doing off that one way or the other and we'd all end up like our kids in the sitting there and not talking to anybody. So we end up in a situation here is obviously the way I want to like say to focus on there and the key elements about this and obviously from a point of view there is that this technology combined with an electromechanical safety gear will allow you to eliminate components in the shaft. So looking and obviously from a point of view there, from a traditional point of view, we're looking at it, you've got your overspeed governor, traditional tension weight in the pit, you know, obviously, you know, there are obviously been some innovations with uh, uh, electronic overspeed governors over the, the past year, but in the end of it all, it has been very much a traditional element of there, that these devices have to be present. So what I'm looking at to is saying you know, from the point of view there is, and what we can now perceive going forward is that, you know, with this technology and with the standards and with the, the codes that are there, that's within there, we can actually look at moving completely away from that, uh, which culturally is obviously going to be something that is going to be significantly different from people getting on top of a lift and finding there's uh, where's the overspeed governor rope. Uh, and obviously those of you who know me from my past with my affiliation with ropes, obviously I love ropes, so the last thing I want to do is see any of them disappear. But usually the main ones are the ones I usually worry about, but anyway, we'll go from there. So. Just to delve into this a little bit more from the side of this from there is, again, if we're looking at safety and we're looking at you know, eliminating potential hazards in the lift shaft, we actually, by going through this element, do that. Obviously, give some more flexibility uh, with regards to the, the lift designer, you know, the configuration of the lift in a building. So, sorry, we go, let's say for we're going to give free reign for architects for a corner guiding, you know, elements of there, the, you know, the situation that we have there, you know, you know, with our open adjacent, there's always been a problem. You know, so you give more flexibility in regards to the lift design there, moving forward from there. And obviously, you can do this because you've got these, you know, obviously, you're going to have to have some considerations. Obviously, if you've got, a, you know, electronic devices, you've got to have the necessary ba backups to make sure that it functions in all occasions. So, again, it has to be a combination of factors of working with controller manufacturers as well as mechanical, electrical component suppliers to actually make sure it works together because it can't just do it on its on its own from there so so going forward on the side of it from there you would actually that these components have been arranged with obviously with people talking about sensors instead of on a me mechanical electrical device obviously is something that you know has got to be very much thoroughly checked through and proven through it so obviously the point of view again the enhancing safety of having less components in the shaft you know, obviously means you can obviously look then at increasing the cabin size, again, especially if you're in an existing building, obviously something that's significant. Bear in mind, of course, as we all, all know, that obviously it is meant for new lift installations, this standard. You know, obviously the other thing, of the obviously if you know the exact position or the lift knows the exact position in the shaft and you've got, you're not waiting for reaction time of an overspeed governor and a component that in a lot of occasions from a maintenance point of view, accessibility, maintenance point of view, um, checking through things like this. It's not something that is commonly, you know, I think obviously if any supplementary test side of things, if everybody looks at it from there, I would say that the majority of failures you would get would tend to be related to overspeed governors and safety gears working as a compatible system and being tested through from there. So you eliminate that because it's basically relying on you know, a, an electronic signal to activate the safety gear. So it means then, of course, is if you've got UCM solution, you're at, you, you've got instantaneous reaction to it, their positioning side of things from there, you've got response times for it are far greater than you would get from an electromechanical relying on um, the variations of wear and tear in an overspeed governor to create the reaction to it. I mean, obviously, we have got some of those systems with regards to electronic systems in controllers at the moment that use the drive to monitor the UCM function. But imagine in combination with that, with this system, triggering it you know in such an instantaneous way 
you know, you're eliminating any potential risk of people being obviously in the you know, being have doors opening outside the door zone, etc. from there. And obviously the reaction time being the critical thing. So and again from the point of view there is that you know the, the obviously you know there's you know you know, obviously, people say, you know, the traditional thing is always put the safety gear under the car, or if you've got a configuration, it's very difficult to do a synchronization with a lift car, putting their safety gear on top of the car. You know, people are obviously not, you know, not very comfortable with those sort of things. You don't need to do that you know, side of things. You've got not a consideration that you're going to be incumbent by the synchronization of the safety gear, which again is another mechanical element you're eliminating. So Again, as I stated for us there, the, the key thing obviously is that from a UCM point of view there, it's that, you know, the, the ability to be able to have this, this instantaneous reaction is obviously very critical and obviously a significant advance going forward. So, and then again, from the point of view there is that uh, from a maintenance point of view, as obviously we've all got our car tells us when it needs to be serviced now, tell us when the tires are deflating, even though they've just lost about a million, you know, a minuscule amount of bar and always causing that anxiety on the motorway that we've got a flat tire but people want the lifts to be talking to them because in the end of it all as we go through as an industry going forward you know we the ability for the, the the lift telling you that it's had you know it's got an issue it's got a problem it's but it's had an activation of the safety gear which can be minimal side of things from there i've you know i've had twenty thousand there uh, I've had 20,000 journeys and I need, you know, uh, I've not had a, a maintenance visit carried out. The demand for more and more information to come through from the lift and what is the lift doing and access to actually fault finding as well going forward, you know, allow it to, from the point of view there, with this technology, you, you'll be able to do so for it. There are obviously some potential dangers for that. You know, I'm, things, things that I'm waiting for the first film that shows up somebody hacking into the lift and making it do all sorts of uh, funny things as it goes up and down. Um, just don't say that I told you so. It doesn't make any difference. So, is it pie in the sky? Is there is there developments to do this? There is already, from the point of view there, that obviously there are developments in, in electronic overspeed governors. Yeah, you know, the uh, and obviously from a point of view that you know the reason why it can work in the way it does obviously is relying on obviously de-energizing of, of magnets through the signals it's been given through. Uh, and obviously, from a point of view, at the moment, you will have a, you know, a combination, as we discussed, with, uh, you know, with the existing UCM solutions. Obviously, at the moment, most sides of it, obviously, single direction. Again, you know, the synchronization for the releasing side of things there. So there's, you know, combined with that, with the fact that obviously at this moment in time, there are a number of products out there that are obviously a number of companies that are developing you know, speed monitoring systems with the absolute magnet position inside of things like so it's not it's not a, f a fanciful thing it's the f you know there are elements to drive this forward through from there and there are already products out there that can actually fulfill this function developments obviously one of the key elements about this again you know from point of view obviously more to do maybe from a retro you know there's some there's the ability obviously to use this as a retrofit a modernization package as well so this it's not going to go outside the 2050 on brand new lifts because obviously as we know standards apply obviously you want it to even an existing lift you'd want it to its uh, maximum potential safety so you you've got the ability as well as to look at this see solutions on existing lifts as well if if need be to do that obviously on a lot of occasions you would obviously want to look at a bi-directional solution as well these aren't as readily available or or available on the market as such and obviously are in development going through from there but obviously from the point of view this is you know this is a serious sort of direction that um, lift designers and obviously manufacturers are there to luckily support because obviously it's driven by by lift designers and man you know and, and and producers in that respect so there are th things to be considered with this side of things about it obviously you've got to think you've got to obviously have a very good UPS ba battery backup system, which does have to be tested on a regular basis to make sure it works, you know, side of it from there. Um, you know, and I think that's again where this mount the monitoring side of things going forward. This is one of the probably one of the crucial areas about this because obviously it will fail safe, but you'd also don't want the you know, the interruption of the lift fail you know failing due to the fact that the battery backup doesn't work. Um, it is going to need uh, over time you know obviously it, it does need a uh, for the accuracy it does need a, a degree of skill in the setup and the installation of the product 
as well as the complete integration with the complete system. So again, there may be more, you know, f going forward, there will obviously be more demands on it. So then there may be some of the more modular sort of uh, construction that we have at the moment. These devices will need, you know, over time, some, some getting used to in regards to the setup. And obviously, must be integrated with their, you know, a compatible speed monitoring system. So you're not, you can't be, so I'll just, I like that, that product, I'll use that one with that. You've got to, you know, I think obviously from a type testing and an approval pro point of view as well, you've got to make sure that you've got obviously a good marriage between, you know, designers and pr manufacturers to make sure you get the right product through and obviously the right, with the right functionality uh, going forward. And obviously the one, th the other thing is the cultural change. I mean, if you talk to uh, people regards to that, that this, this is the least consideration in regards to these, this technology and these strata systems. But I prove that if you're going to start introducing something where you start to remove things like overspeed governors and tension weight and ropes, I think you know you're certainly going to have to come to a, a situation where you, you know education and obviously uh, the you know the design and the reasons why this is obviously going to be for, for first and foremost, and especially if you're going to be talking to engineers like me or from the years out, it is going to be, you know, you're going to have to do some convincing of why this is a better system to do it. So it's an education thing and we move it through from forward from there. So to enable to do this, obviously, and combine it to make sure these things do work as compatible systems um, and to cope with the, the challenges, obviously, means obviously there's a lot of emphasis, obviously, in cooperation with lift designers and manufacturers of a number of in a number of disciplines to be able to do it. Obviously, the, uh, the ability to maximise car, car size, obviously, and capacity, obviously allows the point of view there, which, again, is to use, obviously, full use of 3D design to do so. Again, it's all, it's not, it's some of it's not new, but it's obviously now it's from a more harmonious uh, a approach to things to actually bring forward these things. And, and I think fundamentally get us to a point where we change, we, we you know, the, the a lift changes in a way that is very, very positive indeed for the future. Uh, and obviously, in that respect, it uh, gives us the capacity to make lifts safer and obviously, you know, improve the, uh, you know, improve the, 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 uh, the flexibility that our, you know, customers, and designers and their buildings will want to and allow to do so. Thank you very much.